So today's video is all about how you can beat Tau. Now, Tau are an army which can be incredibly intimidating to play against. Um, they can be described as pure shooting abuse, which I think is pretty true. Now, even with the new Space Marine meta that we're facing at the moment, Tau are still doing well, they're still winning tournaments. Um, so this video today is designed about how we can teach you guys techniques to deal with Tau. Uh, specifically, how you deal with shield drones, how you set up against Tau, how you can identify when they make a mistake and how to capitalize on, on it. And of course, how you can break the Tau castle and how you can charge Tau without getting shot to death. Um, now these are techniques that I've started to use in my games and I've found it much easier to play against Tau since using these. Right, let's take a look and see what I'm talking about. Welcome guys, it's Andy here from D6 Evolution. And like I said, today's video is all about how you beat the Tau. Now, anyone who's new to the channel, D6 Evolution, we're all about 40k tactics here and making you guys better 40k players. So if you're new to the channel and you like what you're seeing, consider subscribing. Now, on with the video. So, um, the first part of this video is really about understanding Tau so that when your opponent makes a mistake, um, you can capitalize on it. Because actually, it's incredibly hard to play Tau. And the simplest mistake can absolutely devastate their game plan if your opponent catches you out on it. And I think a lot of the times where Tau players do well against some opponents is they don't realize that the Tau players made a mistake. So the Tau army revolves around some key units and it revolves around three and six inch auras, which are really, really important. And it's important that every time your opponent, the Tau player moves his army, he keeps those three inch auras, those six inch auras completely intact. And it's important to every time he moves to examine that situation to see if he's definitely done that. Okay, so when we look at a Tau army, we have damage dealers and we have buff characters, and then we have the defending shield drones. And that's pretty much the makeup of every single army. So let's go over quickly what the units are. Now these, these units will probably change over time as we get supplements and, and so forth. So I don't want you to concentrate too much on this part, but just know this is the basic makeup of a Tau army at the moment. So the damage dealers that they have is they have the Tau broadside, they have the riptide, and they have the commanders. Now obviously there's other things they can bring, but they tend to be the core things you're gonna see in most armies. Um, now they can either shoot with their SMS, which is 30 inch, 30 inch range shooting out of line of sight, or they can shoot with their 36 inch range guns. Um, the next thing you're gonna see is you're gonna see um, marker lights. Now marker lights tend to go on, um, on Cadre Flyer Blades, they can go on um, Fast Sight Marksmen. Sometimes people bring Pathfinders and Shield Drones as well. Marker lights are key to your opponent's strategy and they're looking to get five marker lights on there for the plus one to hit. But even some of the other buffs like uh, moving and not counting as moved or or ignoring cover, they're, they're actually quite good for Tau as well. Tau have two stratagems they can use for marker lights. They can use the Sasea, um unique uh, stratagem where they can put um, a marker light within, with all units within six inches of a unit that they choose. Now that is at the start of the phase. Um, so if pe people quite commonly try and use that in the middle of the phase and that's just wrong. And the other one they can use is they can use uplinked marker lights where they can get an extra D3 marker lights after they've hit with a marker light. That's a really common one you're going to see. It's really good. Um, and the last thing they've got is the dreaded shield drones. Now shield drones have to be within three inches of a unit to use their savior protocols and on a two up they can pass the wounds over to them. Now shield, shield drones we're going to cover a lot more in a later part of this video because there are tactics to get around shield drones which I'm going to cover. The other key units to know about is you have Dark Striders to let infantry only fall back and shoot. This does not include battle suits such as broadsides. Uh, and the other one to look at is the Ethereal who gives six up feel no pain to a six inch aura around, uh, around him. So when a Tau army deploys, it's trying to put all of its shield drones within three inches of each unit of battle suit. So you've got to go through all of the shield drones before you can shoot um, the battle suits. The second thing they're gonna try and do is they're gonna try and put those shield drones out of line of sight. So you've gotta shoot the actual suits to go through the higher toughness, which is again, incredibly annoying. The third thing they're gonna do is they're gonna try and utilize the greater good to their maximum effect. So they're gonna have every unit in their army is gonna be within six inches of every other unit. 
So that means when you charge any of those units, all the rest of their army can shoot at you. I'm going to get into later on in the video exactly how you can get around that mechanic. Um, but it's important to see whether there's any units which are outside of that six inches because that is the key to getting into the Tau Castle. Okay, so these are my top tips for the shooting phase. So first of all, examine the Tau army. Look at how he's deployed. Is there a weak spot? Now, like I said at the start of the video, he should have all of his drones within three inches of all of his suit units. Now, if he's only got a unit of five drones in range of just one suit, and there's no other drones, drones within range of that unit, that, that unit there of suits is actually quite vulnerable just to being shot off the board. So if you can focus fire down on that one unit, you can kill them quite quickly without killing most of the drones in the army. So in this example here, you can see that if my Lehman Rust battle tanks want to shoot these Tau here, there's loads of shield drones just across to the side here, uh, which are in range of both of these Riptides. And then you've got a central unit of, of uh, drones here, which are in range of all three units as well. But what you can see is there's actually only five drones in range of these broadsides here. So actually by calculating which drones are in contact with which units, you can see that actually, if you clear these five drones here, there's gonna be no drones um, which are near this broadside unit, which means they're actually a good target for the turn. Second thing is outrange Tau. Tau have only got really an effective range of between 30 for their SMS and 36 inches for their, the rest of their guns. Now, obviously you have to take in the full threat range to their move. If they can Monkar, their move and advance move. Now, so for that, you have to check which units are in range of their commander, because if they're not within six inches of their commander, they can't Monkar. If you can effectively outrange Tau, um, like with your long guns, like your Lehman Rust battle cannons, which are 72 inches, they can't return fire um, you know, on those units. And that is a really effective way of just killing Tau. I've got my two Lehman Rust tanks here, and over in the corner here, I have the dreaded Tau Castle, which is set up first. The question is, how far back do I need to set up my Lehman Rust tanks? So what I've done, guys, is I've put some dice down on the table here. So this would be 36 inches. So this is if they stood still. This is the danger zone, which is the white ones here. So if, if my Lehman Rust tanks over here decided to deploy within 36 inches of the Tau Castle here, what would happen would be that they would be able to kai on first turn, so they'd be able to reroll all of their hits. Now, that's two dead tanks. By deploying more than 36 inches away, back to the next line, which is 36 inches plus a move, now at this point, um, they'll be in range if they move, so they're minus one to hit, because they've moved. Now, if I want to stay outside of a Monkar range, i.e. a move, advance, and then stay still, then I have to be behind the red dice here. Next thing to do is to use terrain to your advantage. Now, people say that Tau ignore line of sight. They do, but not with their good weapon. They ignore it with their SMS, which is not bad. I'll give you that, but I'd rather be shot with just SMS than the whole of the Tau army. So the way that Tau's going to work here is that, uh, you know, it's burst cannons, you know, it's high yield missile pods. They're not going to be shooting you. It's just going to be the SMS. So stand behind big line of sight blockers. And that works really well when we come to the assault phase as well. So you can see actually on a um, corner to corner deployment, you can stay out of range if your Tau player plays far too defensively. Now, if you can't stay out of range, the next thing to do is stay out of line of sight. By staying out of line of sight, by putting the uh, Lehman Rust tanks into the building here, you're effectively meaning that they can only hit with their SMS, so it's 30, 30 inch range. They're gonna have to move to be able to hit those tanks, so they're gonna be minus one to hit. And apart from that, they're going to have to, um, they won't be able to get any marker light support on there as well. So they'll be hitting on fives because they've moved and um, they'll only be able to hit with their SMS. Now, next thing in the shooting phase is area of effect abilities, such as Necrons with their doom sides. Um, if you've got orbital bombardments, if you've got exploding vehicles, Tau hate this because by the nature of their army, they've got to stay clumped up. They've got to stay together. So if you can put mortal wounds to everything within six, six inches, it is Tau's worst nightmare. Um, now, biggest top tip here. Don't get shot. 
So um, by that I mean, can you wrap something in your uh, in later in your turn to stop your tau player shooting back at you? Um, such as try pointing a unit. And now, guys, if you don't know what that means, I've done lots of videos on trapping units in combat. Now, there's other abilities which are coming into the game now, such as stopping units from falling back um, from combat as well. Such as the Master of Stairs for Space Marines. Night Lords have it now as well. Inquisition have it as well. Uh, these are key abilities. If you can tag a unit of tau fire warriors in combat. Um, or even with some of these other abilities, you, know, you can tag even things which can fly. That's massive against a Tau player because he can't shoot you back, and they've got they've got they don't act in any other phase. So they've got no way of getting you out of combat. Let's talk about drones. People keep asking me how do you deal with drones, and drones are really really annoying. Um, it is the bottom line here, but there are some ways of getting past them. So like I said at the start of the video, it's important to have a look at your opponent's army. Have they set up right? Have they left a gap where actually uh, a unit suits are in the open or they've only got like four or five drones next to them and none of the other units of drones are next to that unit of suits. Um, the second thing I tend to do when you're doing target allocation is your small shots, put them into the drones, your big shots, the high damage, shots put them into the suits for two reasons one um if you shoot them against a drone they've got a four up and vulnerable save so that shot only has a 50 percent chance of um, actually going through the invulnerable save second thing is if you put it onto the drones there is a if you put it onto the actual unit of suits uh, there is a chance it could just go straight through and kill a suit perfect if it doesn't then uh, it gets converted into one mortal wound and that mortal wound they can save on a five plus so it's got a 33 chance 33 percent chance of saving that wound as opposed to a 50 percent chance if they just took it on a vulnerable save so bigger shots into the suits smaller shots low strength into the into the drones themselves now the next thing to talk about with drones is they have a four up and vulnerable save they have a five up feel no pain now that's just really strong. That's when people say oh, I can't kill drones, it's because they're actually just a ridiculously good unit. There's no easy way around it. Effectively, think of them as having a three plus invulnerable save if you're shooting at them with one damage weapons and math hammer it out, and you'll realise that when you think you're just not killing them and you're being unlucky, you're probably just rolling about average. Now there are ways to get round drones. Anything which doesn't actually roll to wound. Um, such as Smite, such as Hellfire Shells, the stratagem which does D3 mortal wounds, anything like that which doesn't roll to wound can't be, um, can't be done with the Saviour Protocols onto the drones. So in that case, you can just sh uh, shoot straight at the targets you want. You can bypass the whole drone mechanic. Um, the other thing to note about drones is they work against infantry as well, so that you know if you're trying to snipe out characters or if you're trying to get that last model in a unit to get a kill point, the Tau player can tank those on drones as well, which can actually be really, really annoying. Um, and there are specific, there are other types of drones that you need to be aware of, um, things as grab inhibitor drones for the minus D3 off your charge distance. Don't be caught out by it. Okay, let's talk about charging Tau. Now there's quite a lot in this video about how you can break a Tau castle, how you can physically charge them. Now, people who don't know Tau very well, effectively they have for the greater good, which is the most annoying rule in the world. Um, Tau army set up so that um, each unit is within six inches of every other unit in their army. And when you declare a, a charge against a unit, every other unit within six inches of that unit can overwatch as if they're being charged, which is absolutely brutal. Tau normally hit on fours, in overwatch they hit on fives. So there's not actually that much difference between Tau overwatch and a Tau shooting phase. Generally, if you've not got any fancy tricks or you haven't got a plan for charging them, that unit's just going to die. There's no other way around it. If you've got an entire Tau army shooting you, they will probably kill whatever you try and charge in. So rule number one, don't charge Tau. You're just giving them a free shooting phase. If you can't think of anything else to do with that unit, just keep it still. Now, the next turn, that means a Tau player has to still shoot that unit, as opposed to it just being dead and they can shoot something else. So, that's the first thing to think about. There's one slight subtlety with the greater good that you've got to be aware of. Um, so, Tau units, when they shoot for the greater good, they shoot as if they're being charged as well. So, if you've got uh, ignore Overwatch powers, they're not all created equally. 
So if it says the bearer can't be overwatched, you're golden. If it says if you cast the power on a Tau unit and that Tau unit can't be overwatched, all the other units around it can still overwatch because they're shooting as if they're being charged as well. Next thing to do is using line of sight. Now, line of sight is massive in Tau. Now they can still overwatch with their SMS, um, but they can't overwatch with the rest of their guns. Uh, and they're still gonna have to declare the greater good with all those other units as well. So if you've got a bunch of units behind a big line of sight blocker, that's your key to getting into the Tau castle. So the best thing to do against Tau is probably to charge out of line of sight. You can see my Eversaw here. He's lined up a nice, easy charge versus the broadsides and the shield drones here. Um, what what is going to happen though is that the SMS can still hit him. Everything else is wasted, but the SMS can still hit him, and I think that's important to know about the Tau. Now, the second thing to do is using the greater good against the Tau. So the greater good is a fantastic ability. It means they can absolutely annihilate anything in Overwatch that they want. However. It also means that once they've used the greater good and they have to declare which units are using the greater good before they shoot any shots, they can no longer fire any overwatch for the rest of the, of the turn. So that's really, really big. So what I'd do here is I'd charge in my Eversaw here because he's out of line of sight and I would charge him in to maybe just the shield drone there and my plan would be to tag the broadsides in combat. Now... What can happen here is essentially the whole tower army is within six inches of those unit of shield drones. That means that everything here can overwatch if it wants for the greater good. But it also means that they won't be able to do any overwatch versus the death watch versus the uh, versus the librarian dreadnought here. So it's a big choice for the tower player to make. Or if I didn't have the Eversaw, maybe I'd just do the librarian dreadnought versus the ethereal. And so you know what? You can kill my librarian dreadnought. But that means that my tap, my uh, well, my Death Watch here is going to charge the rest of your army, and you're not going to have any Overwatch left. So it's just about playing around the greater good. The worst thing you can do is declare a charge against everything, because by declaring a charge against everything, they don't have to use the greater good, and they can just keep shooting Overwatch. So obviously, if your opponent doesn't. Um uses greater good against the Eversaur Assassin there um, and just lets the Eversaur Assassin charge in, just stop at that point. Don't charge the rest of your units in. You've done what you needed to do. The Assassin can pile in against the shield drones and consolidate into the broadside unit tying them up. There's no point wasting, um, sacrificing other units such as the Death Watch here by just throwing them away needlessly to the greater good that the, your, your opponent's waiting to use. So plan number two, what we've got here is we've got a lone fire warrior who's left. Now he is the key to the whole Tau castle here. And the aim behind here is we're trying to wrap up the broadsides. And it's also a good idea to try and touch the riptides as well. The whole reason behind this is that if the riptides are tagged in combat, even though they've got fly, they can't kite on the next turn. They have to move. So if they haven't got the minus one to, if they haven't got the, the system to allow them to move and shoot with no penalties, they're minus one to hit as well. So it's really important to get minimal games versus Tau. So tag, tag even the Riptides in combat if you can. But it's really important to tag those broadsides because they can't shoot next turn. So what I'm going to do here, so if I declare a charge against anything over here, that means that whole Tau castle can shoot. But if actually I declare a charge purely against the, uh, against the, the last Fire Warrior here, all that I can do is that when I declare my charge, even if I get Snake Eyes, I can just move them like this form a nice little conga line like this and then easily kill him in combat and then consolidate into the broadside again so when you're planning your assault you're going to look at you know line of sight blocking train how can you use it you're going to look at what units are outside of the Tau castle now by the Tau castle i mean everything in their army has to be within six of every other unit for them to use the greater good now if you can find one thing which is outside of that castle, you know, it can be really, really far away from it. Particularly if you've got big units, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with my Death Watch here in a moment. You can make, you know, that, that is your key, that is your way in. So I've done the same sort of thing here again. I've charged in the Eversaw, I've charged in my Death Watch squad purely against the, uh, the unit over here. The lone little fire warrior in my deployment zone. Now moving all the way up here, I've stretched my unit of 10 Death Watch. I know it's ridiculous. And I'm only about four or five inches away from 
the tail gun line here. Now, so you can see how far away you can do this. And all I do here is I activate my Eversaw Assassin first. I remove the, I remove the uh, lone Fire Warrior, and then I pile in and I consolidate my big unit of Death Watch here. Because I'm within seven inches of this gun line here, I get both my pile in and my consolidate, and I can nicely tag in here. I can move this whole unit forwards. Because with that Fire Warrior dead, that's now the closest unit, and I can move forwards towards them with my whole unit. So there we have it. That is my top tips for dealing with Tau and breaking into the Tau castle. So the key things to remember are analyze the whole Tau army. Check out their auras. Every when they set up, every time they move, you're gonna outrange Tau, and then you're gonna look for the key to get into their castle when you're trying to assault them. Now guys, um, I've done other tactics videos as well. Uh, I've done a really good one on deployment, which you can see up here. Um, and guys, if you like the channel, consider subscribing to it. Um, and let us know if you want me to cover anything else. Take care.